Hey Finksters, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Finks.com and in today's video I thought uh, we are going to have a 5 minute two, two pandas tutorial. So um, I just published a blog article with this topic. So th there's, there's a probably very popular pandas introductory um, uh, tutorial uh, called 10 minutes to pandas and in this article I, I, I want to half that time. So I want to uh, in 5 minutes give you like 50% of the stuff you need to get started with pandas and then you can look up all the functions uh, as you go along. Okay, so let's dive right into it. How to use pandas? So first of all, you simply type in import pandas spd. And um, so this is a normal pandas statement that uh, helps you inject the pandas code into your uh, Python module. So you can access it via this pd uh, prefix. And what is pandas anyway? Pandas is called the tutor the Excel um, sheet, uh, so like Excel for Python coders. So it's like an Excel sheet, two, two dimensional tabular or spreadsheet data. And this is just stored in your Python, um, in your Python code. And actually understanding pandas is really important for many data science tasks. Okay, and if you have, if you, if this doesn't work for you, so if Python already throws an error here with this import statement, then what you, what uh, you need to um, import uh, install pandas by just typing pip install pandas on your in your shell or terminal. So if you are on Windows, uh, Linux, or uh, Mac OS in your terminal. Good. So how to create objects in pandas? First of all, there are two types of objects. We have pandas series and a pandas data frame. And um, those data structures are labeled. So we call so we can. We call the labels indices basically, but they are labeled so we can call each row has a label name and each column has a column name, much like a, a, an Excel sheet where the labels are just indices. Okay, let's have a quick example. So here's an example where we create a panda series. And a series is a one dimensional labeled array of data values. So think of it as a column in an Excel sheet. So you, you see this, we have we create this series with four integer, uh, four numerical values. One of them is a float, three of them are integers. And it just converts all of them to the same homogeneous data type. And we, you see all of those values have a label. So this is just one row in an Excel document in your Python code. Okay, and what is a data frame? So let's have an exa example of a data frame. Data frame is a two-dimensional uh, data structure or labeled data structure, much like a spreadsheet. So if, if, if the series is one column, the uh, pandas data frame is the whole spreadsheet. And um, so it, it looks like this. So we have um, like, we can initialize the data frame with this pd.dataframe uh, constructor function. We pass a dictionary of values. For example, there are many ways of creating a data frame, but this is one of the most common ones. You pass a dictionary that maps keys to values. And the keys are now the column names. Yeah, and the value, so you see it here, H is a column, name is a column, and cardio is a, fun, a column. So the keys of the dictionaries are the column names, and the values are the um, column values. Yeah, so, so you have, you should, for each column, you should have one value. But now, you see here, in, the, in this case, we have, um, uh, for each row, so we have three rows uh, with indices 0, 1, and 2, and uh, we have we define the rows here via the list, so we can simply give all the um, values in this uh, in all rows explicitly in all in one column explicitly, or we give it implicitly by just providing one value, and then pandas will just fill it up with this one value. And if we don't specify any value, then it will just give you a not a number value. It will just fill all missing data values with not a number. So this you should know. Okay, and then very important it is how can you select some elements from this data structure. It is a data structure after all, and data structure, it must provide you a means to, to store data, to access data, and to analyze data. Okay, and um, so for example, you can simply call s.h. This will just access the whole column. You see this sh, it just accesses the whole h column. Um, maybe let's not print this whole data frame anymore. And uh, you can also uh, use slicing, for example, um, here slicing like from two to three. So this will just access all rows between start index two and end index three. Yeah, so this is normal slicing operation. If you need help with slicing, then check out my article. I give a link in the description below. Then you can also use Boolean indexing. This is very popular, uh, very popular feature. 
and this works as follows. So, so we have, we pass into the indexing scheme. So this is the normal indexing as is our data frame. And now into the indexing scheme, we pass a, a number of Boolean values. Okay, so this is just, so we basically on the data frame cardio column, we compare this column with 60 and this gives us for one, for each row one value, whether it is larger than 60 or smaller than 60. And um, in this case, we have true, false, true, true, false, for example, values. And uh, so larger than 60 are those two. And so therefore it will then access, so we access these Boolean values, we use them as indexing mechanisms. And this works beautifully to access only the rows that satisfy a certain condition. Okay, and um, next week you can also select values by label. So for example, for, to do this, you would use the df.log, so maybe uh, data frame.log. So you can use this log index. It's, it's a log. If you call log, it's a special index. It helps you select values by label. And now you have to pass the number of rows you want to select. And here we use slicing to select all rows and the columns you want to select. For example, only the name column. And if you execute this, you get only the column of also all only the names here. And um, you can also provide multiple um, columns or select multiple columns like the a name and the age and put them into a list and select only the, the uh, all rows but the first one okay so for example this would this would work like this and if you run the code you see it selects uh, two columns but not the first one and the indices remain the indices of the so the bob index one is still bob index one okay and uh, so this is how you can use the log index but then you can also select values by um, I log by with this I log method and the I log method it doesn't allow you to do, do this um, this uh, this uh, labeled indices but now you can use simply simple indexing scheme for so for example to access the second row and um, first column you just use this function and this will give you um, the name Carl okay because Carl is in the uh, in the row with index two so it's actually the third row and the uh, column one so which is the second column okay. So, um, so these are the most important thing. You, so now the question is, how can you modify an existing data frame? So if you have a modify, have, have a data frame, how can we change it? Yes, yeah, so you simply can, for example, do the following. You can use S, then you access, using the accessing scheme you have already learned, which is uh, Boolean indexing, uh, log or I log, so for um, uh, in, in indices, and you, or you can just select any value and then override this value, for example. We, now we select the whole column, and we set the column to 16. So now the age of all will be 16. Okay, you see it here in the in the output. This is so the so the age column is 16. And um, you can also so I think so of course you can also use more advanced techniques. So for example, you can override only the all rows, but the first one, and override only them with the age 16. And now um, no, it doesn't work. Ah, okay, because you you would have to uh, need to use the log index. Yeah, so because we select by um, by label. Good. Okay, so this works. Let's run this, and you see the result. Now we have initially we had age eighteen. We override the age of all rows, but the first one um, for the age column. Okay. So this way you can use all the selection techniques to override the dictionary. And there are many, many functions on uh, the override the data frame. And there are many, many, many functions you can execute on data frame. You can even plot the data frame very quickly, but this is not part of this tutorial. So this was just get you started five minutes to pandas actually took eight minutes, but uh, still thanks for watching. And I give a link uh, for uh, to the tutorial in the description below. So you can check out the tutorial on the Finkster blog. Thanks for watching and see you in tomorrow's video. Bye.